How good was that? 40 is back. G'day, I'm James Clements, not to be confused with combination Lions and Swans mm. player Craig Bolton. Great combination, yeah, man. don't mind that. Don't mind that. Interesting. This is the AFL Today Show, and I'll tell you what, this is the prelim rap show. And this is brought to you by the t- our good friends over at Top Sport, the home of footy finals. <sighs> we are finally here, gentlemen. Joining me for this one is... A pair of footy nuffs. Some would call them AFL experts. You wouldn't find me calling them that. There's Alex Donnelly over there in his swans gear, head to toe. <laughs> his, red, to toe. Gr- his red Brody Grundies are even <laughs> in red and white. It is Alex Donnelly. Feeling good, feeling happy. The voice is back. And just, I'm going to enjoy this week. It's, it's just a great time to be alive. I'm, I'm surprised you're alive after, after a big Sydney weekend. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty tired, to be honest. <laughs> He's no ready one. to go. He's ready to go. No one cares. <laughs> I'm banning him from all the shows this week. It's probably easy for everybody. Uh, and in the middle, the little fella, the stats boy. Yeah, very good to be back. As uh, Alex said, he's got his voice back. I've got my voice back. I don't know what happened last week, but very, very happy to be here. And sad that I missed some shows. Uh, you know, just off your deathbed, being oh. fed chicken noodle soup by your mum. Apparently, as you, has you flu. No, nah, I don't even know if I did, but that, that was going around apparently. Yeah. I just find it weird and gross. It's also, you know, a weird sort of correlation where you're sick and suddenly Australia playing one day is in England. <laughs> what? You just up all cricket, night watching today. Oh, to be fair, I watched yeah, a bit of Chelsea last night. It was beautiful. There's just so much sport at the moment. It's great. Anyway, <laughs> we have a grand final matchup yep. yes. set. We're going to talk about it. But before we do that, we'll talk about the prelims. Uh, this is the usual Sunday show uh, to set you up for the week ahead. So we've got a quick look at what's happened over the weekend. We've got a vent sesh. Uh, it is a loaded Vintage. i got a few problems with a lot of things. As opposed to the usual <laughs> Vintage. Yeah. It's a surprise to no one. Jim's got issues. Uh, it's just the Jim's Vintage. It we're really is. That one. What's your secret, Jim? I'm always angry. <laughs> I'm so basically... Jess Webster said to me a few weeks ago on the W show. Yeah, like, yeah. Just, yeah, I'm just saying. Hulk. That's how it rolls. <laughs> uh, we're going to wrap some games. We're going to talk about the tipping results. We've got full credit to the boys, which is the best team of the weekend. Best on ground of the weekend as well. Yep. Our favorite player. Uh-huh. Old mate, no mate, who stunk it up. Why I can't stand a couple of gripes that we're going to air. It's the airing of grievances. <laughs> but then we'll get to the point where like we're going to be looking yeah. at the premiership odds yep. because that's yes. where we are. We're into the grand final. Hell week. yeah. Can't wait. So let's go. Uh, before we get into it, make sure you subscribed on YouTube and across all of your podcast apps and following the AFL Today Show across all your socials. Did yeah. have a couple of blokes come up to me at the pub. So Josh, old mate from the Gold Coast, whose name I've completely spaced on. Stole uh, mate, right, yeah. From Gold Coast, Shane. <laughs> 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 but genuinely, I had three different blokes walk up to me and go, Alex, footy's back. Yeah, so, that is awesome. Shout out to the blokes at the bat and ball and Kieran for helping me out with the tickets. V nice. All nice. right, grand finals footy, grand finals footy is yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Quick look time, bit of news. <laughs> Is he Knuff? So this isn't really news, but we have to put it in. Cast there. your mind back yep. to Friday. Mm-hmm. Power of beaten from one end of the uh, SCG, which is actually bigger than the Adelaide Oval. Really? I uh, don't know about the dimensions as it <laughs> pertains to the MCG. We might have to ask an es- expert about that maybe. I mentioned expert but, over here, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Port Adelaide losing on the prelim. Is he Knuff? No. <sighs> no. I'm going to say no as well. I think he's fine. I think they just need to change it up. I think... He's this, not a bad coach, though. What we saw last week where they fought and fought and fought, make it, they just looked dead on their legs this week. And I think that was completely fair. They did stop, stop, stop. They played They played their <laughs> grand stop, final stop, last stop, week. Stop. We knew that. I called it and just like yell, 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 yell. Yeah. Play their grand final. You can only get up so much emotionally and keep riding that. But night. I feel like every time they've made a prelim that we're going to say that like they, their team is never going to be good enough under Ken with this list to make a grand final. Did they, you look I at their think. forward line? Yeah. Exactly. So that's we'll, we'll talk about this we'll when we get to the wrap. But yeah. basically, that's where you'll hear. <clears throat> I think it's lucky that they played on the Friday because that sort of fades so off into the background. So if they got pumped Saturday afternoon. If that had been the Saturday game, this would have been the dominant storyline, I think, rather than how sick that Brisbane yeah. yes. Geelong game was. I right? agree. I agree. It's like, oh my God, but because it was Friday, we're kind of all just moving on, which is probably for the best. <laughs> best we can, yeah. Uh, another one. So I. You know, Brunswick dad vibes this morning, hanging out with the squids at a playground. You've just got all the other bleary-eyed dads just going, oh, God. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hanging out with a couple of other Brunswick dads, but both Geelong fans. Yeah. Oh, there both you go. just like, why didn't we have Zach Tui? And you're like, it's a good point. Mm, it's a very it was pretty point. crap the last game. It's like uh, they just they had some qualms, they had some problems. <laughs> uh, they almost still won that game, of course, Geelong. And they are up and about at the same time. I feel like they sort of came, they came out of that going, we probably would have gotten our heads kicked in by 
Sydney. Mm-hmm. They were both sort of like, oh, yeah, that wasn't good. We probably dodged a bit of a bullet. Uh, so I don't know. How do you guys feel about this? What, that they should have won the game or they've missed an opportunity? I think that if Max Holmes, which I'm going to touch on later, if he stayed out there, they would have would have won, I think. Like, yeah. As soon as Holmes went off, Brisbane were like, oh, We've got way more faster guys going through the middle. Max Holmes, when he when sort of he got it, he can he can burst out of a pack. Yeah. Whereas it not even danger, he's getting old now. So this was Stuart couldn't really do anything. Cast your mind back to Thursday's show, which you weren't on. <laughs> yes. Stats boy. But one of the big things we kept an eye on was Geelong's pace. Yes. It's not And good. that was it. Yeah. When they were fast, when they were moving the ball, they looked absolutely awesome. But they don't have many fast players. And then boom, as you yeah. said, Max Holmes on the bench for like what, 15 minutes? 20. And it's just like, yeah, and then God, he went off. Well, so. yeah, it was like eight, 12 minutes by the time they're like, <laughs> yeah. hey, Max Holmes has been on the bench for a long time. It's like, Brisbane oh, just God, kicked a lot there. of goals as and well. And boom, yeah. off they went. And then it's also because it was what it did to their structure <laughs> and setup, which we'll talk about more. So it wasn't probably a midfield, it was just losing their most important midfielder. Yeah, then I wrote down here they're just missing another midfielder. Yes. As soon as they get Bailey Smith, which is most likely going to happen. I hate how Geelong does get to reload I know, again. but and again, and he's again. like 50 50 if he's getting sure there's an the outlook park. about to come from another apple. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Nathan Abler's probably got 87 <laughs> kids. I don't yeah. know, like whatever. Possibly. Uh, the other sort of thing to come out of that Geelong Brisbane game was a couple of uh, what? You had the Dangerfield tackle. Yep. The, oh, that, was, that didn't look great. That's a week. And then we week. also had the head high hit. Wasn't it of who was that? Jack Henry Jack hit Henry someone, but he got uh, yeah, Chucky. Uh, but oh, more shoulder that. than anything, which it was when Archie snapped the goal. Yeah, I think he'll be okay, but Danger Danger's going to get a week. He's just a big guy that when he drives them down, but it was a dangerous tackle. It should be a week, probably. Whatever, that's boring. <laughs> right now, we've got a bit of a grand final matchup. A bit of a stat for you here, stats man. Yeah, what is it? It's a bit of a. Uh, <laughs> I wrote it down, so yeah. An I know interstate. I, I, I'm going to get to this. <laughs> An interstate matchup. Interstate from where? <laughs> it's the AFL. Ah. No, it's, it's big biases. You it's big ridiculous. Bias. Interstate. Anyway, it's the first one to not feature a single Victorian team since 06. You Which said, really, su- yeah, really surprised me. And then you've got the first time since 1899. Cast your, cast your minds back to there. 125 years. I remember it well. You see, you cast your minds back and we have, we have a the very- The just the lines. There's a very strange moment going on down there at the bottom of Africa. <laughs> some sort of boar war. <laughs> anyway. anyway, anyway, you got the Swans and Lions playing uh, against each other in the grand final for the first time in 125 uh, years. Obviously back when they were South Melbourne and Fitzroy. They so were the South Melbourne blood. So I would contend this is, this is the first meeting between the Swans and the Lions. Oh, okay. There you go. In the grand final. Very go. cool. Yeah. Well, that, the, club, of the, yeah, the club. Yeah. Of the lineage. Yes. But you said it was a bit of a surprise as the first one to not have a Vic team in it since 2006. Just a surprise because nah. there's been some good teams. Like, nah. Yeah, but so, you think about the dominating teams over yeah. the last 15 Geelong, years. Geelong, Hawthorne, Richmond. It's Collingwood, Geelong, Hawthorne, or Richmond. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. One of them will make a grand final. I'm just saying yeah. one. Surely one of them. Anyway. And then there was St. Kilda in there who didn't win one, but were always up couple, there yeah. as well. Like. Who it's, else? Like, did anyone actually? Or Western um, Bulldogs, Melbourne. Bulldogs, yeah, Mal- there, Melbourne yeah. were in a couple, yeah. yeah. But it's mainly Geelong, Hawthorne, Richmond. Yeah. Yep. And Collingwood. Collingwood. Yep. Collingwood. Nice one. There so that's the quick look. Should we get into a bit of event search? Oh, yeah, quickest quick look. We did pretty well there. Well, <laughs> got to live up to the word. It was good. No, I'm saying it was good. It's actually, I, actually, it feels nice because when you get to this point, there's not much a else. Lot. No, we can just talk about the game. In terms of news, you just go, the game is this week. Yep. It's on. Very true. And we're going to the pub. Yeah. Like, it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, the game. Verge search. Good things. Bruce McAvaney. Yes. Anytime he does anything, you're like, that's the gold standard. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. The, cl- the level went up when Bruce was on the panel. Even yeah. the goddamn post-game stuff, he's just on. It's like, I want to listen to this man talk forever. Yep. What are we doing? How does everybody suck so much compared to Bruce? Yep. It's ridiculous. It's be- you got these two jocular morons usually after the game go, oh, what did you get there? What'd you get there? <laughs> and Bruce is like, you know what was really great about all of this? You you were just special. special. <laughs> it's a yes! Yeah, yes! He said it! Ding, 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 ding! <laughs> <laughs> Off we go! That was awesome! Even the crowd going to Brown Bruce on uh, the Friday night, I don't know if you guys saw that on the Channel 7. They were literally cheering him. He goes up and gives people a high five. I'm like, there's I- no commentator that is like a pure commentator. All right, some of the other ones are players. Like, oh, I always looked up to that player. He is getting high fives from the crowd as a commentator, a pure commentator. I specifically went and shook Bruce's hand one day when I was working at the races because I go. wanted to shake Bruce's exactly. hand. Did you he watch is lovely. Him? He's awesome. I did the same, but I did for Tim Lane. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. like, I'm just going to go high five and just say good day to Tim Lane because yeah. he rules. Like, yeah. And it's like when, you fan, when like you fanboy out about like a, just a straight down the middle commentator, yeah. 
you know that they're awesome. Yeah. As simple as that. Bruce, like being such a savant of sport, when a friend of mine introduced me to Bruce, he's like, oh, and he's like, oh, your dad, this and this. I'm like, oh my God, Bruce knows my dad. <laughs> That's awesome. Alex he's, didn't wash his hand for six weeks. <laughs> yeah, Bruce has just got like this weird sports supercomputer in yeah. the back of his noggin, which is- He I prepares know, yeah, very Horse well. racing and footy. Yep. Uh, but that puts it like this, the reason that this is in Vensesh is because it puts in stark relief just how- Bad. The rest of the commentary was this weekend. Friday night, we had a commentary team that was just bored. I heard just it was bored. horrendous. Yes. You were in the game. It they were yeah. was los. Like even as the French and Spanish <laughs> no, might combine to say los horrible. Even like, the it game's was not that bad. Shocking. Yeah. How can you not be stoked? Like they're busy just trying to basically like spin the wheels. Have like a hint, just a hint of enthusiasm. About either of the teams. Yeah. Break down what's going wrong with the power. Yep. Talk about what Sydney are doing correctly. Don't sit there and just talk about the most surface level rubbish you could ever come up with. <laughs> they just were like, oh, this just sucks. Like, <laughs> I can't even believe I get to watch Collingwood or Richmond. It's like, shut up, <laughs> idiots. Just commentate the game. They can still hype up the big moment. Like, the, Sydney had some awesome goals while they were on that big run. You can still hype up the big moments. I don't know what they'll do. Even about. just, like, I mean, also happy if you want to, like, Pile on the power. Yeah. Like just lean into kicking them <laughs> while they're down. Yeah. Which is They're not that's not their job, I guess, but yeah. Point out where it keeps going wrong. Yep, you can do that. Oh, I po can. <laughs> point out time right and time there. again how they've made it to this spot and they just keep falling down. Point out the ways that they could fix this, how they've tried to fix it and it hasn't worked. There should be like you'd go into this game going, right, if Sydney are up by X amount of points and it looks like it's a fait accompli that they're basically through, hmm. what are we talking about? We're going to go through this, 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 and this. You can have like six dot points. This isn't rocket surgery. This is the stuff that we do. Yep. And we're idiots. Like, we don't know what <laughs> we're talking yourself, about. Yeah. We're just some dudes. Like, but the way that they went about it was so unprofessional and just so I agree. rubbish. Yep. And it really grinds my gears. And then you've <laughs> got, boy, oh, boy, where we? Dars on Saturday. Just stinking up the joy car. Oh, well, look at Eric go. Who's Eric Dars? <laughs> What are you talking? Oh, wow, look at Jezza go. Who's Jezza? Nah, Jezza's fine. Everybody knows who Jezza is, yeah. but just stop using nicknames, you idiots. Jeez, it's the prelim. Just imagine you're commentating. This is the broadcast. Yeah, it's just true. This could be like your mum. She's watching it for the first time this year. Not our mums, but <laughs> actually, Joss might be only Trish in for this. got very lippy at the SCG on Friday night. Punching D. Yeah. She was ready to go. <laughs> Matt Stevick copped it at one point. <laughs> but come on, just do your job properly. Luke Darcy. It's not rocket. And maybe he's just smarting from the rubbish that he copped on Friday, which is pretty funny. There's a lot happened on Darcy just gets buried time and time again. He keeps asking for more. I'll give Darcy credit. He has nailed the ending sequence of a couple of these finals, yep. but it's the nicknamey stuff. Like when he nailed the Amadi and Heaney goals, the last two minutes he nailed last night. So yep. I'll give him that. But if he could just find tune. He also a had bit. a couple of moments where he was just getting dudes wrong. I heard, was not I heard oh, BT I had a bit BT, of a shocker. BT was absolutely having a mare with mm. some of the Sydney dudes. It's like, oh, hey, hey, hey uh, Brian, have you watched Sydney this year? You're like, oh, wow. Well. <laughs> it's, it's not as if Sydney have been prime time for a lot of their games. What an absolute Barry Crocker shock is. Anyway, uh, so we're just going to go all barrels. Uh, what have we hit on? We've talked about <laughs> commentators. Commentators. And umpires. Comments. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, the umpires. They, uh, they don't comment every week. <laughs> Sydney fans absolutely oh. feeling gross. The first half of Geelong Brisbane was surprisingly bad as well. Yeah. Which was weird because everyone's like, Friday, that's the bad crew. And everyone on the Saturday crew is like rubbing their hands going, we're, we're, we're going to be in the grand, grand final. final. Yeah. And then they had themselves yeah. an absolute shocking first up, but they were very, very good. I thought the good the second, second half, half yeah, I agree. They sort of put the whistle away, apart from that stupid Tom Stewart hit <laughs> on Kyle Loom, Loman. Yeah. The Kyle Loman, like, like, well, we can touch on that later. He literally just bumped him in the, in the ribs. That was weird. Anyway, there was just horrible, horrible, shocking calls left, right, and center. <sighs> and uh, watching Sydney fans just unravel, is awesome. I love it. <laughs> it's why I'm going for Brisbane this week. I'm just saying because I, I'm going riling up Sydney. For, no, actually, sorry. I'm going to put all my money on Sydney because they're the best team in 150 years. <laughs> but this is the world's longest jinx. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's led up to this grand final. No, 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 or it's just, this or, has been about 15 or weeks. Or Nostra Gymnast. Yeah, yeah. Or he you knows what's awesome. awesome. <laughs> uh, but. The way that they were unraveling on Twitter was hilarious. It was just like, oh, my God. It's like, you're fine. Settle down. Yeah, we were fine despite the horrendous umpiring. It Don't worry about it. You're one. You're one. Just, oh, it's also not great when you get to a prelim and it's like, oh, this is the best we've got. What are yeah. we doing here? My, what, I was also like, 
on a cricket pitch where it should help you bounce it. How could they not, not bounce yeah. the Well, football? that's another argument of why do we need to bounce it, but that's that's another thing. Final vents, Ash. Anyone who thinks Victorians are upset <laughs> about an interstate grand final. Hello, Tim Gossage. Hello, this Boomers, is, I think, is this the This is the uh, most boomer one. take is, in the world, it is. isn't it? Stats a lot of older people think. It's like, oh, where's my Victorian? No one cares. <laughs> Just give it, like, all it is, all I want from a grand final is a really good game yep. or someone to hate. And, and like, yeah. that's where the Victorian yeah. thing comes in, right? Like, most... Victorian supporters will have Hate each other's a team, team that is from Victoria. You have a built-in rivalry, and you yeah. just hate that team. So that was Collingwood for you last year. Everybody could hate Collingwood like, last year. There's no Victorian, season. other than maybe like Essendon and Sydney, they have a bit of a rivalry, but like there's no Victorian teams that hate Brisbane or Sydney. And the, the fact, like I think the Lions are one of the most exciting teams to watch, at, well, and Sydney, obviously, obviously. I think they're both yeah. wildly exciting Like They're more exciting it's than awesome. Port and Geelong anyway. So, 100%. Yeah. yeah I, it would, I, I would have hate watched a Port Geelong grand final. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's it. Like, what is interstate as well? Yeah. It's the AFL. <laughs> interstate from where? Yeah. Papua New Guinea? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> is that going to be in the NRL? Interstate oh, from the G- Germans? Like, what are we doing? It's so <laughs> dumb. And anybody who says anything about this this week, you actually have my permission. Slap them in the back of their head. All right. Simple. Footy's footy. Yep. Just shut up. Boom, boom. It's going to be great. Just yeah, shut up. If your team is out, you basically want a really good game. You want something to hate. We well, probably yeah. have a really good game. Or the, yeah, there's probably someone like people hate Papley, people hate Zorko. So then it's like, okay, I hate that team. Yeah, it's easy. <clears throat> right. Should we talk about the games on the weekend? Let's yep. get into it. Game wraps. Hey, Friday was fun. Hey, what was also weird was that both teams that won scored 95 points. Really? 14-11. Yeah, correct. Swan scored 95 points when they beat Collingwood too. Oh. Watch out. Can we go exact score next week? Can, can you be better on that with top spot? Let me have a quick look. It's getting very <laughs> that close could be to, uh, don't, 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 don't do that. Don't, I bet responsibly, of course. <laughs> go stats good, good stuff, Definitely, stats, I'm still going to bet on it. Also, <laughs> uh, did we see last night before we get into the game wraps, the umpire calling uh, Will Ashcroft Marcus? Yes. When did you become an umpire? Uh, on the long weekend. <laughs> Makes sense because you're not good at your job. <laughs> is the umpire boss? I, like no, I would never be an umpire. That is just boring. The Sydney Swans defeated the Port Adelaide. <laughs> They've got the power to get yeah, that Port Adelaide in. Port football Adelaide. club is that we're going to say? What was it the Port Adelaide football club? You said the Port, Ad- you said- Port Adelaide football <laughs> yeah, footy club. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Gaz. <laughs> we're going to say something like that. Even yesterday, they're doing the, oh the Geelong Footy Club. It's like yeah, but you mean the Geelong Cats? Yeah, just call the, them what the they team, are. Yeah. The team that plays in Geelong, like yeah. the women's team, didn't lose on the weekend. Hell so yeah, they the, uh, not the footy club. Ninety five fifty nine. Yep. So I was explaining to the squid after this game happened. He'd. Uh, yeah, he watched all of the Saturday night game because it's the early one, but yep. he didn't watch all of the Friday game. Respect. Uh, Sydney were what, up for what? I think he watched the first half. So yeah, lots like, of fans might not have watched the whole Sydney point. Exactly. Okay. And he's like, Dad, did they win? I'm like, yeah, there's no problems. How much, boy? Because he's just that's, numbers. He's five. And he's like, tell me the numbers. Numbers are so good, yeah, yeah. He's like, where were they on the ladder? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. Like, it's, his question, uh, like, I think, for Geelong Brisbane, he's like, where were they on the ladder? Some kids question well, Geelong, Geelong like, shut up. That's a great question. And Geelong were third? Yeah. And he was like, well, Geelong should win. I'm like, ah, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. <laughs> but he's got the right idea. Yeah. I like it. I like but anyway, it. the 36 points were like, wow, that's a lot. I'm like, it felt like more. more. Yeah. yeah. So it did. there we go. We had a crazy, crazy start. I think we'll let uh, the man who was there sort of sound off on this. But the biggest thing, obviously, as everybody alluded to, was that the Swans Won the first quarter. They yeah. finally won a first quarter. Port, Port had their chances in the first quarter. Port but were. They were pretty man. good. They were like, hang on, watch out. They're going to do it. Port. But Port. Sydney were just, was it four straight I think, yeah. in the first we quarter? Yeah, nine one in the first so half. That, that helps a lot, doesn't it? All right. Other than that, take it away, Alex. Just Alex for uh, half an hour, is it? <laughs> yeah, no, it, was, it was good to see, though, the Swans actually you know, hitting the ground running, winning a first quarter. Obviously, Port got that mm. that first goal from just Blakey just deciding to run through Jace Burgoyne. Matt Steffi's like, ooh, opportunity to impose myself. Yeah, sweet. Uh, <laughs> But just the movement, you could tell straight away that the Swan, like very quickly, the Swans were actually on their game because they had their uncontested mark game going. Port Adelaide were winning the clearances and winning them pretty well. Uh, but it was sort of like Rosie, Horn, Francis. Butters really wasn't doing it a lot. But then Port just got into this game plan of like, oh, we're going to get the footy and we're just going to kick it straight away because the SCG smaller and we're going to get it at the top of the square and Tom McCartney like, <laughs> Asava, get out of the way. Thanks. Bang. Intercept mark. <laughs> Can I uh, jump back to the joke I think I made on Twitter the other day? It's like, oh, every Carlton fan is watching this game going, like doing the Leonardo DiCaprio meme. Hey, yeah. that's Carlton. <laughs> it? It's like, that's where Vossi learned his game plan. Yeah. It's like, ah, get the ball, just kick it. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It literally was. Someone will mark it surely yeah, at that, some point. That's footy. Uh, yeah. It's easy. Um, but he, yeah, Heaney and Errol straight away, they were just moving all over the park, getting a lot of the yeah. footy. 
Chad Warner took a while to work into the game, but as I was saying on Friday with a couple of people, I was like, if Tom McCartan and Hayden McLean are taking marks early, the Swans are on. And all three big forwards for the Swans, uh, McLean, Amadi, and Logan McDonald, all taking marks all on the scoreboard in the first half. It just set the you tone. You needed that. and then Because yeah. usually you got all the mids stepping up and kicking goals, which they yep. did. But once you got your forwards going, you're like, this team's unstoppable. Well, because you can win without your forwards even doing anything. Yeah. But when your forwards are firing, like, it's It's, scary. it's a great it's scary. confidence booster coming yeah. into a grand final. But Alir Alir was probably the best on ground in the first 20 minutes. Yeah. And then Longmire's like, uh, Luke Parker, go annoy him for the rest of the night and just absolutely shut him down. It was a great- That's such uh, a weird- idea to well, put him on in. But just game. to block his run because Aaliyah knows how smart Parker is mm. around the footy and he just couldn't, you could see a couple of times Aaliyah was like just on the ground and he's like D -d oh god I can't go <laughs> and it allowed the Swans just to lower their eyes and hit up the moving targets. Uh, poor, I thought they were just horrendous with the football. Their yeah, disposal efficiency were, yeah. at times was just yeah. criminal. The Swans, so, 12 goals from turnover. I was actually about their to look disposal at efficiency landed at 71% and that was way it's higher than I thought bad, it was. But, it was like, yeah. but versus the Swans, which was at 77, basically, it was yeah. crazy. So I wanted to hit on that as well. I was going to do this in the lead-in, but why did it feel like it sh felt like it was a much bigger margin? Is because they had... A disposal count of 356 to 281. Yeah, yeah they one. smoked them. Yeah. That smokers. is an absolute demolition. Mm. And it's like the sheer difference in the way that the two teams were using the ball. Mm. Sydney was just all about ball control. Kick, 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 kick. We've got the ball the entire time. Paul's like, uh, uh, I've got the ball. Ah! Yeah. And off they'd go, right? The pressure was, was great as you well. You look at the stats, though. In a lot of other stats, Port weren't that far off. So they got they led the clearances. At uh, halftime, the clearances was 25 yeah. to 10 in favour of Port. Which but is crazy. But at three-quarter time, it was 30 yeah, to 25. They, the Swans in the third quarter half. just went, nah. Smashed them. Absolutely smashed it. 131 marks to 70 is yeah. hilarious. That was so noticeable. Just yeah. the Swans were just working and just moving around. And Port were just, they had a zone defense set up hmm. thinking oh this is what choked the swans last time but the swans were just working yeah. harder it was it was freshness in the legs against that uh, jason horn francis was phenomenal he, he was, was great, yeah. everywhere if it wasn't for him this would have been 80 points he had so many times where he's just thrown himself into the contest got a clearance butters really didn't help him out rosie did bits and pieces but really wasn't super noticeable no, yeah i'm gonna talk about rosie later yeah. but that was it was. There were like these weird little two minute flashes. Yeah. yeah, it was the exact same as the week prior. I feel like and he's done like, that. Dude, what are we? Doing? Year, but that was the bit. thing with with Port. It was the Swans were just consistently good all night. Port showed two or three minutes of sort of flash and brilliance, but then it's like, ah, oh, okay, no, nah, you, you're just not catching up. Like Heaney had 27 and two. There was one point Unreal. when he took the mark on Burgoyne about 30 seconds yeah, before yeah. it, because uh, it was in the pocket I was in. I was like, Heaney's going to mark this because he's on Burgoyne. He's just going to just push him back oh. and just take the grab. You could see that coming, uh, but. Amadi three, Logan McDonald two. Uh, I think Hayden McLean kicked two as well. McLean only got the one. only got the one. Logan McDonald kicked two, Warner yep. two, Heaney two, Lloyd. Yeah, as we said one. Thursday night, Harry Cunningham gave it Willie will an absolute. <laughs> no, one bath. goal for Willie cost a few multiples. And it was so. just a lucky out the back goal where Cunningham <laughs> took ten marks himself, had thirteen touches. Just one of those nights where everyone's like, "Every Swan did your job. Yep. Good job, Sydney." It was just. You just, or you, I could, we could keep talking up the swans, but how about the Port's forward line? How it's forward line was shit. Oh, so their goals, their goals came Dixon's from done. two for Connor yeah. Rosie, <clears throat> one from Jace Burgoyne. Burton, Free kick. Free Rioli, kick. Burton off half back, yeah. Georgiades in one each. Dixon one that he marked at the top of the square. Yeah, it dropped. Boke. Boke had an absolute Barry Crocker shocker of a game mm. as well. Yeah, he and, was uh, so fumbly. Like someone near me said, you are the worst 350 gamer ever. Oh, that is But if you look at the list harsh. of blokes who have played 350 games. He's yeah. been, no, everyone's got a bit of recency bias there. He's had a great career. Never so in terms of the disposal winners though as yeah. well, like it's it was so stark yeah. in terms of like what's going on with Port. JHF, mm. 23. That was their Seven leading, clearances though. That was still good. Their leading yeah. possession get had 23. Mm. This is a That's team that when it's playing its best, it's this weird, free-flowing, happy days footy yeah. that just – it's like basically a teal tsunami, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> They just get moving and moving and moving. The next is Burton on 23, Boke 22. If Burton's getting 23, you're in trouble. You're sh it's your shot. Like, Butters got really the 20 missing, like, at the very end of the game but, and was just but he, ineffectual. He wasn't any, but yeah, then, but then you look like Asava was just in the fourth line going, oh, I don't know how to play forward. <laughs> then they threw him in defence and he couldn't get near it. I Brandon mean, Zerk Thatcher was a genuine so, passenger. He was just standing there yeah. going – uh, I don't know. I'm from Essendon. I don't belong here. <laughs> They're two big pickups. What was it? Zerk Thatcher and Radigley combined six for six touches. So it was just yeah, brutal. And Zerk Thatcher had negative five meters gained. We're, we're talking about the disposals as well. Who are they missing out of that? Is Houston. 
Houston, I know well, Houston and Kane Farrell. Of course, Kane Farrell as well. But Houston just gets at 25 to 30 touches, drive off half back, rather than your 20, your 18 to 20 touches, which isn't going to have a massive yeah. impact. So I think he was a massive out. He wouldn't have obviously won in the game because Sydney were way too. They good. would. They would. We didn't poor. even talk about friend of the show, Cheeks Robottom. I God, you always love good. talking him up. So God, I was like, oh, I'm surprised good. Alex hasn't talked him up here. 18 disposals, 11 tackles, which is awesome. Uh, and that's five. Broke his all time record. Oh, did he? What was what was his before that? Ten. Whatever it was. No, no, all time season record. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, five more than anyone else on the ground with the tackles. So he Pretends just goes for it every time. I love it. James Robottom, our just best mate, Cheeks. Un unsung hero. He, he he subscribes to my entire theory that the human body craves contact. <laughs> Eddie does. Yep. But you <laughs> have a look. So it was Robottom, 11 tackles. Heaney, six. There was one absolutely awesome rugby tackle he laid. It might have been on Butters at one point. Just drove just the shoulder bang. in. It was great. Campbell had six tackles, which is something that will keep him in the, in the team yep. next week. We obviously need to talk about Logan McDonald. With his ankle, it rolled to the inside. Of mm. course, he missed the grand final in 2022 when he got dropped. I reckon that would have been a bit precautionary because yeah. it was very early so in he, the quarter. He came back on in the fourth quarter because he was having a fitness test at three-quarter time. Took a mark. And he's like, oh, yeah, he's hobbling. He kicked it. And he's just like, yeah, boys. I think it was like, go check it out for five minutes. See how you go. And then, of course, Callum Mills so on Friday was doing full sprints. Uh, so oh, he'll That's have risky to training, play. Training today, training tomorrow. I personally would not pick him. That's my. But I, I I'm agree. Not, I'm not horse long mark. But I feel like he you might get him picked. Up? No, You're surprisingly, not, oh, no. Be younger. Mm. Yeah. Less, less, uh, less goals in the AFL. Why is he on this show then? I thought we yeah. had a horse long mark. Yeah, yeah, what's yeah. up? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, so, like Scooby Doo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, wait, now I'm wildly disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> this sucks. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I think Logan. From what I'm hearing, Logan McDonald's fine. Uh, but Poor, I, I wouldn't. That. I wouldn't be playing Callum Mills. I just yeah. run the same twenty three. You can't risk it. The good thing is, we'll. We've what else have we got to talk about this week? Exactly Logan, exactly Logan McDonald and Callum Mills. You hope they almost do a Hawthorne like tomorrow or Tuesday and be like, nah. Nah, but if you're going into a grand final, I reckon that's dumb to like tell the team so early on what you're like. I didn't mind in the other sort of finals because yeah. Hawthorne, you already sort of knew what was going on. Yeah, in a grand on final, I'm not telling the team until 6.20 on Thursday night. You're going to make Thursday Chris Fagan write names yeah. on a whiteboard. Because yeah. otherwise they could prepare. Just say no Logan McDonald. Chris Fagan would use a chalkboard, let's be honest. Yeah, chalkboard. <laughs> Nah, harsh. he's got very much school teacher vibes. In yeah, there. but I, I don't mind that. He's, he's, not, he's, he's definitely not using an iPad, Chris Fagan. Definitely not. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I just well, if he sends an email, it definitely still says from sent from my <laughs> iPad. Oh, well, I think going to go from the Twitter my, for iPad. <laughs> sent from iPad. Uh, what do we usually do with these wraps? We finish them off with how are the two fan base oh. feeling after that? Swans fans wrapped, stoked. Yep. Right here. So. Good vibe at the pub. Uh, you said actually good vibe right from the beginning of the game. From the we beginning. So actually it was really funny. So I went to the Bat and Ball Hotel, which is about a 500 meter walk from the SCG. It's in Surrey Hills. You think we're sponsored by that pub? The yeah, I guess but there was about probably 300 people that walked over together chanting and oh, singing, cool. like singing Whoa, Errol. There was a, there was, there, there was a <laughs> tune so to good. Isaac Heaney that they probably need to send the lyrics out in a group chat to everyone because <laughs> it's like they're trying to do it. I'm like, I have no idea what anyone's saying. <laughs> But it was great. But from the first bounce, the crowd was loud. I think they knew they had to sort of bring the noise. Yep. And the atmosphere was great. And then three-quarter time, it's just party time. Yeah, I party like time for the fan base. It's like throwing back to uh, the walk to the Gabba for the Blues fans. Yeah. Everybody walking just in nervous silence. <laughs> just like, uh, uh. <laughs> Someone goes, da, 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 and everyone's like, no. shut up. <laughs> anyway. And anyway. we haven't talked about Port now. Yeah. Port Power fans. fans are just like, I was yeah, chatting with you prelim. after the game, and they were just like, yeah, kind of expected. They knew it's they were going to lose, it's a, probably. It's a resignated, a, a resigned feeling. I think they've <laughs> resigned themselves to this idea of like, all right, if we were going to beat somebody, our bogey team is Sydney, mm. So, but not at the SCG. So I mean, I didn't, if I didn't there was any back. history of that, they'd be feeling a lot better. They would have been feeling more confident. I don't feel like they were that confident. No, yeah. I need to go back to that. So it's all well and good to win eight games straight, but it's all home and away. Hmm. If, you, do, if final, you don't yeah. do it, or even put up a fight when it matters. Well, that, even the last time it was at the SCG was ages ago, right? So, no, it was last year by two points. Oh, we it was at the, the start of last year. It was like round five. Adelaide. Around, no, round. Yeah, the rest of the Adelaide Oval, the other two, the, the SCG. Yeah. And well, then there was one in yeah. COVID We somewhere. didn't really touch on it, though. They're still impressive. Sydney to bounce back from that. The first win against Port since 2016. But then so again, it, it's that. the same as, as, we, as we talked about with Leo the other night. The Kennet curse. It was all home and away games. Yep. And when it got to a final, when it actually mattered. It changed, yeah. It didn't matter. Yep. So power fans are just like, right, where do we go? I just think they're so stuck because their team, we once they, it just say like Houston stays or whatever. And they get He's gone. Back. We He's don't know gone. Yet. But their team's still okay. They just, if they no, get a forward, not. maybe. Yeah, but their forward line's horrendous. They made a prelim is what I'm saying. But they're never going to 
be better than a prelim, I don't think. But that's what I mean. Yeah. The, the, they haven't changed in five years. It's the Carlton game plan of get it, kick it long and hope. Yeah. Unless Rosie and Butters are having 30 and kicking two each, you're in a lot of no, trouble. No, I, I agree, yeah. You can't go on with Charlie Dixon next year. He was getting Bronx cheers from every Swans fan. <laughs> every time he He slipped ball. over at one point. Everyone's like, hey, hey, Charlie, good stuff. The... The sort of flip side of this for power is like Georgiades is a weapon. Yeah. Like he's an he's, absolute he's a B. He's but or, he, he's a jet. Like he's awesome. Like yeah. literally as soon as he gets like a little bit older just, and like like develops in this role, he's gonna be absolutely. Then he better fall about entries You've him, got yeah. Willie, you've got you basically need to like one or two little bits and bobs in that forward line hmm. just to sort of who are, they've also got Lord as well who's out for most of this. Oh, yeah. So yeah. He's, he's okay. It's like, I think there are pieces there for them to build around. I don't write them off next year at all. I just don't I do. think they they could still be top four, top eight, but they're not flag worthy. So I, rem- I, I remember I saw something this morning going, some bloke like going, oh yeah, most of people said Port were, were write offs this year and wouldn't make it to top eight. I'm like, no I swear no we said. all had him in the top yeah. four going, they'll win 16 games yeah. because of the Adelaide Oval and they'll lose in the finals. Exactly. Yep, we did say that. Tough one for power fans. Yep. Koshy's probably somewhere just beating oh, a cash cow. He's fault for coming out on Friday with a, with a four by two. He's like, just like, bye. This is how I work out my anger. How about that one? But Where on is? Friday morning, he's come out like he was coming out boasting on an interview, going, "Well, the last time that the Sydney Swans beat us, Barack Obama was the president of the United States. I don't see that changing. It's like, yeah, you should. Also, shut that up. doesn't. I know that it was a long time ago, but it doesn't even feel like that long ago. Like, Thanks a lot. Come, come on, great, yeah. great work. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great work. Obama's Obama. a big Port fan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The other game. Yeah, let's get to it. This the was better a game. Much, much, much better game. 5.15 at the MCG. Oh, I was there. Best time for a footy game. So yeah. good. Beautiful. To the point where if we just move the grand final there next year, I don't think anyone What about play. next oh, week? Oh, no, nah, I still like 320. 3.20 is good. It's 2.30, It's 2.30. Oh, so that's whatever good. it is. <laughs> Earlier, better. 2.30. 5.15 was awesome. I'm all for it because it gives you like enough of your – like this is my entire thing. I've said I don't care about a night grand final. I'm all for it. Just do whatever you want. Five fifteen, <laughs> best of both worlds. Ends mm. up in the dark. We're laughing. Off we go. Uh, 85 Geelong. Once more, 95, 95 14, 14, 11. Yeah. The Brisbane Lions. The last, what, two minutes, 47 seconds of this game? I was just going to say, the last, Unbelievable. When, when, whenever Tom Stewart laid that tackle from if you, then on. If you didn't watch the whole game and you, you watched the highlights, you go, oh, the first quarter was a bit boring. Just skip the to the fir- last no, three No, the first quarter was great. No, was in, in terms of highlights, it won't be because there was just no goals until the 19th minute mark. In terms of being there, the atmosphere, uh, the intensity was great, but no one kicked a goal until the 19th minute. Just skip to the last three minutes and you're like, this is the best game ever. It was awesome the last three minutes. Yeah, anyone who had a bet on the uh, first goal scorer? Oh, they had to wait you a while. Go, God damn it, come there, on, there was, a, there was a few bad beats there. My mate actually oh. got on, uh, it was a, I think it was like 12.50 on Top Sport, and he got on Charlie Cameron, and he was sweating the whole time because it took 19 minutes. Because well, it was out. always in Geelong's forward yeah, line. Like, yeah. You were just watching going. But I, like, there was like, it was four points to two, and yeah. all of them were kickable. Yeah. And you're like, what the hell, man? When oh. Geelong had kicked those first few points, you're like, Brisbane are totally going to go down the other end and just kick the goal. They did after like it took 15 a while, though. minutes. Yeah. Uh, so as you point out, stats boy, no goal to the 19th minute, then a nine goal second quarter. Yeah, so like, yeah, bing, 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 Geelong are like, oh, we know how to kick straight now. Seven goals, including the best assist of the season. You got uh, Messi, 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 Messi. The internet Grind lost Mize. its mind. Because the fact that, yeah, Grind Mize has been called Messi, he does the best assist from the pocket, dribbles all the way to, who kicked the goal? Was oh, it yeah, Henry? Henry, Henry, yeah. Oh, Henry, yeah. That is so, the best assist of the season, and it was like a soccer assist. I was, awesome. at, I was at the pub, and there was no volume, so I had the uh, <laughs> headphones in listening to SEN. Jared just lost his did mind. He, did he say something He's about like, oh, no, He was like, the, the perfect cross from Gr- like It was messy <laughs> like with a cross hey. with Henry with the tap in, in the back of the net. It's like, good job, Jared. Yeah, I think good we could Cristiano Pelé grind or messy. Yeah. Like, it was awesome. It was like, just great that it was this grind because people I was in with were like, please say that that was grind because that looked like a messy assist. So that was awesome. So Geelong felt like they had this mostly under control for bits of it, but they never really quite – put the foot down, like Brisbane had mm. the lead into the second quarter, Geelong sort of turn around and then have like, what, the 20, 19, 20 point lead, basically 18, 19, I think it was, yeah, 19, nine, heading into halftime. Yeah. And it was like, they looked a little Jezzard bit. Jezzard kicked a couple of goals up at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ollie Dempsey, my beloved Ollie Dempsey, uh, and Grian Myers had a couple of goals early too, right? And you just, Ollie Henry was imposing He himself. was great. Yep. He was just playing awesome. He was though. their most consistent p- player probably through the f- four quarters, I reckon. And it was like another thing that we'd sort of hit on uh, in Thursday's show, like that battle of the back line and the forward line. Mm. 
The weird thing for me was like the forward line of the Lions. Yeah. The big dudes never got going. Joey Duck, well, it's- No, but Joe had to play ruck exactly. for the whole Joey. second half pretty much. That's yeah. another thing we should have hit on. Oscar yes. McInerney, his shoulder just went over there. My shoulder went over there. The man went over there. It's like, yeah, that's He's the first good. player I've ever been at a game at the MCG where they clap him off twice because he, he got taken off. So his shoulder popped out and we're like, or the, I think they'll pop it back in. Then the second time, I saw a photo of it. It was pretty much in his it, chest, yeah. his shoulder. I was like, oh. it was gross. But he got it two claps off by the crowd, even the Geelong supporters, which are very well, rare. Of course, happens. you've got you've got to applaud that of toughness. Like, yeah, he was tough and he went back out, but it's going to cost him a grand final because yeah, but, it, but that you, looks so you bad. need to go back out I in agree, a preliminary yeah. final to help get your team over the line because he he'd been yeah. dominating. And then that, that's why Joe didn't end up getting to do much because he had to ruck. That's the most he's rugby rucked in a game in, in did years. Did Brisbane look better when Joe was in the ruck? I thought they did. Probably, but he, I had a look. Up. He didn't really win the hit outs. But, but it forced, it forced, forced them to, it forced them to the lower their eyes yeah. and just run around like headless chooks. Yeah. It was great. It actually worked well, yeah. So for the second prelim in a row, there's pretty big disposal uh, uh, dis disparity. Is disparity, yeah, yeah. 391 for the Lions. You could see that. Mm. And you sort of take, you know, the dyslexics 391, 319 uh, for the Cats. <laughs> Which is below their average, lines are well above their average. Yeah. And you can sort of tell that as the game went on, right? Like they just controlled the flow of the game. Like basically they rested control of the game from the Cats after what the danger field goal in the third quarter. Yep. Like they just went, oh, hang on a second. If we just look after the ball, this might eventually turn. And they chipped away, they chipped away, they chipped away, got back up in front, <gasps> gave it up again, and I then think, yeah, got I think back up again. A big part of that was just, yes, yeah, seeing the game live. Geelong, I just had a look, had more inside 50s. Every time, I reckon probably after the 10-minute mark of the third quarter, every time they went inside 50, they're like, where's Starsevic and Leicester, even though they're wearing a Brisbane? Let's just kick it straight to them. Hey, I know that uh, Starsevic had a great game, which I was going to touch on later, and Leicester. They got themselves in the right spots. But instead of lowering their eyes, which Geelong have been so good at all year, you go, oh, Jezza always gets a good good kick from Grian Myers or things yeah. like that. They kept bombing it and bombing it and bombing it, not even looking. Like Dempsey, I know he's young, but a couple of times going forward, he just rushed it, didn't even look. And they had so many bad inside 50s. It, the scoreboard at times made it feel like Brisbane were dominating, but Geelong had more, still had more inside 50s in the second half. So, I don't know, it was just Lions frustrating. also had 21 inside 50 tackles, which is insane. Yeah, that, that's a big to difference nine. as well. Like, to nine. To nine. Pressure. Yeah. It's all about the pressure. Do you reckon it's elite, that pressure gauge? Like, what yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand, <laughs> understand the pressure, gauge, the pressure but gauge, but it, gauge. it was going, ooh. Sure, <laughs> they don't have the budget for it. They spend it all on Bruce. <laughs> I watched it all on Fox anyway. So it's like, come on. Just, was there a pressure just gauge? Just throw yeah. it up there. Just <laughs> throw it up there. I'm just making my own. Just like, hey, it's yeah. great, great. <laughs> anyway, the, red was the red was the best one, not green. I don't know. Probably I don't know. Green's low. Outside of this, though, like, that was the sort of point that I hit on earlier, like the bigs of Brisbane. It was like their backline was awesome. Chucky. And Cam Rayner. Cam Rayner. Yeah. Archie, obviously, late, insane. Like, Cam Rayner didn't even know he was playing in the first half. I think the, the greatest half, thing was, was Zach awesome. Bailey actually kicking goals. Yep. Away he missed from a couple home. of sitters. I know. We had a shocking first half, yeah. but turned around and kicked two massive well, ones. I late. was at the part like, this, this feels like this. So you got, you got, you got full Joe. You got full Zach yeah, Bailey yeah, yesterday. Yeah, you did. Because usually like, he's very accurate. Rundown when he yeah. got run down as well, I was like, this is full Zach Bailey. The the sheer look of confusion on his face when he got to – but also, the again, resignation. Yeah. Just like, yeah, that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. He's just like, yeah, 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 I probably deserved that. <laughs> but Rayner, he didn't do much in the first half, and then he had some massive grabs, some hangers that Bruce was uh, loving. He got two goals in the second half, and then that amazing one, the clutch one left on the left. Bomb. Left from outside 50. As soon as they come with his boot, the other leg as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's opposite foot, well, so non, non he was absolutely awesome. So, yeah. There was a clip that I saw this morning doing the rounds on social media. So 2018, Cam Rayner took a mark against North Melbourne. This is when North were actually okay, apparently. Yeah, we were good then. Rayner had a snap around the corner with about 30 seconds left to win it, and he missed. Chris Fagan in the press conference after said, he will learn from these moments, and in years to years and years to come, Cam Rayner will win us games of footy. He's a smart man, Chris Fagan. So like, this goes back to what Callum Dick has said with us all year. Backing in his players. Yeah. Fagan's been doing it for years and, you know, it's it's coming up trumps now when it matters. Uh, Cam Rain is also from around your area, I think. So that's Well, I've t I think I've told this on What's the show before. I had to tag him once and uh, I didn't like him because he said, why the F are you tagging me? I actually play for Victoria. You can get no one near me. He would have had about 40 touches, I reckon. So and you <laughs> sucked at your job. Yep. Nothing, I don't know why no, I was a tagger. Nothing's but, yeah. changed. But he's, uh, he was, yeah, crazy on the field, but great off the field. Great guy off the field. I yeah. love that. He's, he's a good guy. Cam Rayner, not bad. <laughs> but he's, he's very good. The way that this sort of <clears throat> just played out, one of the great finals, one of the most entertaining games of football you could watch. Who thought Geelong was home when Ollie Henry snapped that one around the corner? Uh, 
I almost went out yeah. too much time. If I because it was so much. Well, time. I didn't know how much time it was, was left. Like at the three ground. minutes left, wasn't it? Was it? Like it was two, like two minutes thirty. Two like, forty-seven or we, something when he kicked it. We, yeah, and then when the next one went through, I was with my mate, and we're like, "Nah, something else is going to happen." And it was Ray well, kicking yeah. that goal, but then Mitch Archie, Duncan got Archie run down. For, Archie first. And Archie, yeah. we haven't even talked about him. Three goals. Uh, got the. T- Do you see when he got the TV uh, on the? Uh, yeah, is his kid on the coverage? His kid threw a Hot Wheels car at his TV, and he's like. I, like he was genuinely more happy about <laughs> receiving the free TV for best on ground than winning the game. He goes, bro, are you guys giving me a TV? Yeah, my, my kid just threw a Hot Wheels car out. So thank God. Thanks, guys. Jim knows all about this. <laughs> yeah, Hot Wheels cars are dangerous. To be honest, I'm waiting for the kid to throw the whole wheel. I'm like, ready to upgrade? Oh, mate, you can't upgrade the TV. I'm like, I reckon I can. <laughs> hey, squid. Just piff that out of <laughs> Yeah, can't have just us. No! But yeah, we're talking about Archie. We haven't even talked about Lockie Neal. Like, I know he probably... Like didn't have as much impact, but then I looked at the stats: yeah, thirty-one fair. disposals, twelve clearances, seven more clearances what than did, anyone on the what ground. What did we say? Awesome. What, what have we said for the first three weeks of the finals? Hey, don't let Dane Zorko run around on his own. Well, or Dane Zorko, yeah. This was kind of the thing that I hit on with the uh, the two Brunswick dad cat fans that we had. <laughs> it's just like hey, we need him on the hey, show. Remember, like Lockie Neal, that guy who like he was limping him, though. Yeah, you give yourselves a chance to win. Yeah, and the cats are like ah, it's fine. <laughs> he was limping though, but he still dominated. Yeah. And like the the Blues did the exact same thing and. Lockie just shredded them, yeah. and the Zorko. cats are just like, "What's up?" And boom! So I know that uh, you said Sydney will tag Zorko. This yeah. is something for later in the week. Surely, do they have anyone that can also just run with Neil? Cheeks, cheeks. Yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Like they get what sixty three disposals between Zorko and Neil. Yeah. It's just insane. That's nuts. And yeah. you can't let that happen. So I don't know. We got a bit of uh, you know Scott brothers on the prowl, maybe down in Geelong for the, over the off season. Maybe they can sit down, and take some notes yep. about how to stop like Brisbane. So uh, Neil had 18 against the Swans. Zorko ended up having 29. They didn't run a tag on Zorko that day. They ran the tag oh, on Neil, Neil with Taylor right. Adams and Parker rotating mm-hmm. through because um, Cheeks Cheeks had a busted cheek. And then we, we haven't right. really talked about anyone for Joel. Holmes was really good. I know he only had 20 touches, but that's because he was off for half of the third quarter, yep. then got subbed out. As soon as he went off, as we already talked about, they lost their dash. Stewart looked really off. I don't know what you guys thought. He had he about was, he had he five was first. Turn. He was first up for five weeks. Yeah. But he was still, also – he was – he, had he was involved. Turnovers. Yeah. He was involved heaps. Uh-huh. But the problem was, I he think. He just looked sloppy. They looked rushed a lot yeah. of the time coming out of the Which back Which is very half. unlike that's, him. But yeah. that's because he hadn't played since the first half of that West Coast yeah. game. Yeah. He had five turnovers. Just I know that's not even that many, but just for his class, I just wasn't expecting Can that. We, what about, Sam Doherty esque. What about, about Reese yeah. uh, Stanley missing it from. I'm going to talk about him. We haven't even talked about that because that was. Well, how long was left? Because I was, was only 34, 40 yeah, seconds. Like so that was a chance. Yeah, we've seen it happen before, but. When he got that, I was like, yeah, he, when I saw him go back, I was like, he's missing this. Because it looked like he was concussed and had an ACL tear all at the same time. <laughs> it looked yeah. like me stumbling out of the pub <laughs> after like a 12 hours. Like we like had the pub cricket team or something yeah. and it's just like, super I Bowl can't party. keep up with these guys. Yeah, Super Bowl. That's actually, super yeah, that's me after the Super I've Bowl I've seen you party. walk out of the pub after been, super We've started at 8.30 in the morning <laughs> with a shot. There we go. And I've gotten home at like 4.30 just like walked in the door and go, what, is, <laughs> what are we doing for dinner? <laughs> like I'm completely incoherent. That was I Stanley, can't walk yeah. straight. I'm limping for some reason. But you know what, Jim? Like, it's because like, <laughs> I'm always going to be limping You tripped out over a chair. It's because I've fallen down some stairs somewhere. <laughs> but you know what? Gaz I, taking a spec I would some back point. you with your booming left boot. Still to kick from the To be honest, right I probably might have still kicked it. Like, I reckon you kick it. It's like my pool and darts. Like Everyone is better when they're a little bit hammered. <laughs> I know, but it's footy, but yeah. Anyway, but Reece Stanley, it's like, yeah. Because yeah, the groan point. that went around the ground and Reece Stanley, everyone's like, because John Clare's like, oh, there's a sneaky chance. I saw everyone's looking at their phones for how long. So sneaky chance if he kicks this. Oh, game yeah. over. He's, He's missed ne- it he from right in front. You, it was like re- running, re- this is what you get for running Reese Stanley and Mark Blixavs as your two was okay. run- was Stanley good, did a really good, good job. Yeah. Like they smashed him in the hit out. Yeah. It was because they didn't have big O for most yeah. of this. Yeah. So the other thing, I guess, if you want to talk about more of the Geelong stuff, it was, I thought, like Dempsey had a half decent game. It was okay, yeah. Manor had a half decent game. First half, yeah. And then- there was like uh, Brian Lawson Lies Humphreys was in the first half looked <laughs> overawed by the occasion, and, and then, then in the second half he was second. awesome. But it was just like four or five dudes who had like these good moments and stretches, yeah. but they not, just weren't consistent. Ollie not three or four quarter no. efforts. Yeah, Ollie Henry as well, the same sort of Ollie, thing. Actually, Ollie, no, I think Ollie Henry had a really good four Jezza, goals. Jezza in the second half. Because like, every time Geelong had an almost day that could have yeah. been an all-time prelim game. Every time Geelong needed a goal, Ollie Henry stood up. I think that's one of his best games. Mullen had a bit of a Barry Crocker show. Mm. Uh, yeah, Tanner Brune was like nowhere to be uh, seen. Nah, he was well. bad. Uh, 
Yeah, and then Shannon Neal was a letdown, which I'm going to touch on later as well. He, he drops some easy marks. He tried like. his hardest, I feel like, but yeah. The, the good uh, thing about Geelong losing is that uh, Chris Scott doesn't need to make a call about Hawkins and Neal this week. Well, the other sort of thing is uh, Holmes obviously did his hammy. He did his hammy uh, last time so that he was in a prelim, that, that's what so it, he could have missed two grand finals. When he finals went down, I was like, oh, Max Holmes and Logan McDonald are both going to miss grand finals and the result's going to swap. I know. So Max Holmes is... Obviously not happy either way, but he'd be like, oh, at least I don't have to miss another grand final. But that was a classic finish where we've got three minutes left. It's yeah. still up in the air. Awesome yeah. game. It is just like there is something special about footy when it's in that exact moment where it's just reaching an absolute amazing crescendo. Yeah. Yep. It's just like peaking towards the end. You're like, we don't know what's going to happen. happen. Yeah. This is ab- And like that's why everybody's just like, there yeah, goes footy. Yeah. Was that the Footy's best game awesome. of the year? I, I think a lot of nah. people said that. It's nah. easy to say that without uh well, it's the hindsight. best game of the year with the stakes involved. Yeah. Yeah, because even last week, I think they had some slightly better games. But the amount of, the quality, the hangers, the goals, I'd say that this There's is up like there. like three different hangers. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle Logan, like, we didn't even talk about much. He was awesome. If he kicked straight, I reckon he would have got best was on the ground. Was it Stingle who went up for a hanger, missed it completely, yeah. Yeah. and then Logan just, just went straight back. This is how you do it, check it out. And Bruce, Stingle had a shocker. Bruce went up to him after the game and was like, oh, that was a great hanger, that was special. And, and every, Kyle No, because Kyle Lomans like, like, what was Bruce? He's like, special. I was like, everyone's like, yeah, Bruce said special. Stingle was shocking. I think there was this moment where, like, well, Shannon Neal's kicked a goal in 15 straight games or something. Yeah. Doesn't kick Wait, one. Really? Stengel has also had, like, three plus in his last three finals, barely got yeah. near it, and it was just... Stengel was a big right. one, actually, that didn't do too well. Yeah. 12 goals, 13 is also not going to help your case. Right, how do we finish these wraps? How are um, two fan bases feeling? Cats fans. Sad, but also relieved. We, I just want to show the picture of sad Catman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Catman. When you put in that much effort, it takes like twelve hours for him to, to get ready, Catman. pretty much. Yeah. And then they just have the sad Catman photo. You're like, oh. Did they show him on yeah. the TV? He was on TV, okay, just, like, just the sad cat, just Aww. a sad feline. And I respect it. It's do you? <laughs> like I so, would never do that, but you, every team has to have one crazy fan like that. Like so, there, there's a, every team I, has. No, one. I, I love it. I think yeah. it's great. I'm, it's great for the game. But I, like I also, in, I put crazy, myself though. in my in those shoes and go. There is nothing worse than them losing after you put in that much yeah. time and effort. Imagine a sad cat walking back to the train station. Yeah, you're gonna get in your car and drive away. I saw him when I was walking into the grand final two years ago. I'm like, you're off your head, mate. No, like, I, I, I think it's it. the context. That's gonna be it. Alex next week. He's gonna. Uh, just but I would like to take this moment to blame my friend Pat, who took a photo with Catman at halftime. Ah, uh, what well, he jinxed it, Pat? You jinxed it. <laughs> what are you doing? This is like yeah, when someone says you're home or game over. Just never, yeah. nah. Best team in 150 years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's different. But the Cats, oh, that is a tough one. I think they would have got belted next week. I think there is a yeah, little I bit agree. of a, as I mentioned right at the start, right? Like, I think there's a little bit of bullet dodged. A couple this. of Geelong fans don't have text. I think going, Brisbane oh. are a much better matchup, which we'll touch 100%. on in the week. Yeah. yeah. So, so okay. you, know, you know how Geelong, you're going to get it like an eight out of 10 no matter what. But if you stop a couple of them, you get them down to a five. Yeah. yeah. That's what happened to GMHBA a couple of times yeah. this year as well. Yeah. Yep. That's what happened. So, but I think the fans are just like, we're still good. Like, that was such a great bounce back after last yeah. year's, like, dip from the grand final. You're back in a prelim. It's just and the And a lot of young guys outside. are really good, so they'll be happy. I think they'll be fine. Yeah. Yep. Lions fans. They can't, oh. believe they can't believe they're there. Remember remember halfway through the year, everyone's like, yeah, they're cooked. So, remember <laughs> before they beat the dogs, we're like, they have to win seven of their next ten or I did cooked. say that they were going to, yeah, still. I, I, was think like, I, said they I was like, if they lose to the dogs, they're done. Yeah. And then they well, smack the dogs. Well, remember the AFL Today shows <laughs> tweet yesterday Explaining I how insane for this was for Brisbane. Yeah, two and five in round seven. Yeah, two and five, dead and buried basically at that point. Still a threat to miss the eight. They were six, six and one in round fourteen. They were thirteenth on the ladder. Yeah, thirteenth. They were second in round twenty. Missed the top four and then drop out of the top four because of the Collingwood game. But doesn't matter. And the GWS game down forty four to GWS in a semi final. Win the game down twenty five at the start of the third quarter in this game. Bounce back. Now you're in a grand final. Team of destiny? Question mark. The other thing is Chris Faye, like uh, what Cullen Dick said, the fact that they were 2-5, everyone's gone, they need to change this, they need to change that. We've got so many injuries. Is he picking the right players? Fagan did not change his team unless he like had to with injuries. Every single week, there's a lot of coaches that would try and change things. He just said, I'm just going to stick with my players, and they've gotten better every single what week. The- so he's an amazing coach, I think. Lions very, fans, yeah. stoked. Yeah. Like, it feels fitting as well because – Last year, they finally, lost, we get yeah. to this point. Is the first time since 1995 that the two previous losers of the grand final are playing in a grand ah. final. 
Mm. Actually, do you want to know another random stat? Do you know the well, only- You're the stats guy. Yeah. Give us a, that's what, why am I giving stats? <laughs> no, I'm stat giving Ace stats. What are you doing? I'm giving Ace stats. Do you know the only team in the AFL to beat both grand finals this year? Freo. Oh, damn it. I thought you might not get it. Good one. There you go. Uh, that, that, Freo, there you go. That's my stat. Thanks for ruining it. It's not a Kel- stat. <laughs> that's a fact, fact not whatever. a stat. Ah, Kelamachi Kel- being in the grand final. Does it make it feel like the Suns are in the grand final a little bit? And Jared uh, Barry? Jared Barry? Or is it Lions? But Lions fans, look. Just stoked. Yep. You're there again. And I think as I was about to lean into, like the fact that you lose a grand final last year and you're back there again. Redemption. It's so rare and it's awesome. Like I love this. It's Jared Lyons. 95 was obviously what? The Cats lost to the Eagles in 94. Blues lost to the Bombers in 93. God damn it. Uh, Bombers. And then this one, you've got the Swans having been belted by the Cats. Yep. Lions last year against the Pies. Like the Lions look so good in last year's grand final. It's kind of cool that they're back there. Not so much redemption, but it feels much more like uh, it's fitting. Yeah. like And they didn't play bad in last year's grand exactly. final, so they'll be like, they'll be confident, I think. Awesome. How did our tipping results go? Finally, you got some tips, Jim. Yeah, Jim's Jim. on the board. Finally. <laughs> two and nine, baby. Two and two. Well, two of eight so Just far. Just say two of two. I went two of two this week. Nailed them both. Same. So did I'm the stats boy, yeah. Alex. Tip Geelong. To be fair, I think that was a 50-50 game, so yeah. that's pretty fair. Full credit to the boys. Who is the best team we saw this weekend? For me, it's Sydney. That's it. I don't. I don't need to say it. We know who it is. I was. Oh, just, I, I was just pitching it over there. Yeah, he'd, yeah. I thought he'd say something because it is a podcast. But yeah, uh, <laughs> this it? video you can see me. Smiling. Are we getting filmed for this? I but they were. Cool. Geelong Brisbane was the best game, but Sydney just put them to the sword just so expertly mm. that you're like, ah, oh, they're just way too good. Yeah, power have. No chance. Power also played pretty crap, though. That's why I- Or was it that Sydney just blitzed them and didn't yeah. give them a chance? I think if you were that inexorable, like, mm. if you don't let Power have a crack, yeah. then they just fell yeah. apart. And that's what happens. Like, yeah. Sydney are that good. They're just like, this is cute. This thing where you think you're going to make a girl, well, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you little thing. He's going, oh, Zach Buddies, you look evil. Get out of here. Oh, hair. God, I really see you're so handsome. Oh, he's got yeah. to Seeing it, I was 10 metres away from him at one point. Super handsome. Super handsome. God damn those cheekbones. Oh, he's got a restraining order yeah. on uh, Conor Rosie. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was 10 metres and then suddenly he was 9 metres. <laughs> <laughs> 9 metres and 97 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stats boy, who yeah. was your favourite uh, team of the, of the week? Oh, well, I wonder what other team I'm going to pick. Uh, is it Geelong? No, it's not Geelong. Geelong of course it's Brisbane. North. Yeah, North. Can I pick North? Sure. The women's? Uh, they were great in the women's. Brisbane, obviously, I think they were great. Just... Accurate kicking for once. Like, that's just a massive tick for Brisbane when they can do that. Less inside 50s, and then their depth <laughs> players standing up. Obviously, we talk about Sydney's depth. Yeah. A lot, I was sitting next to someone who goes, who's number 35 for Brisbane? They go, I was like, oh, yeah, that's Ryan Lester. Who's Ryan Lester? Like, a lot, <laughs> a lot of Victorians would go, obviously. He's the forgotten man, right? He was Lester. very good, and he's always pretty consistent. Doesn't always stand out, but he had 20 touches. He had Starsevich step up. It's like every time Logan Morris touches them, I'm like, yeah. who's that again? Yeah. Oh, Logan Morris. So sure. They have a few guys that pe- maybe people in Victoria are talking about Vic Bias just don't even know. And they've, they're stepping up. So I think Brisbane, just there's the overall team effort because obviously uh, Sydney had their stars sort of step up, but it yeah. was more the depth players for Sydney that st- uh, for Brisbane that stepped up that really impressed me. So they're my best team of the weekend. Uh, also, like well, we had the Connor McKenna little chip kick over the top. That was really cool. We didn't hit on that. It was sick. So yeah. he comes on as the sub. Really good effort. And we've got the Graham Myers, Graham or Messi cross yeah. Two great at assists. one end. And then yeah. you've got the Connor McKenna. What's he doing? Oh, my God. Yeah. So everyone there. The little would, Gaelic would, footy kick. So just, awesome. he's looking towards the goal. Everyone there would have a snap and not even look inside. He just took like a millisecond look inside, snapped it off the side of his But It was very Gaelic-like, that, was so that little cool. snap. So I like that. Just want to shout From out the a bit of uh, McKenna. That was very nice. That was good. Yeah. So... I like that the best teams of the weekend are the two teams that we've that got one. the grand final. Well, obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but Who else are we going to be? <laughs> Last year, you could have done Collingwood and GWS in those prelims. I, who did G- uh, Brisbane beat in the prelim? Oh, Carlton, sorry. Carlton. I, I honestly forgot. <laughs> <laughs> who did they beat again, Jim? I did not appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I genuinely forgot. That's also it why was, he hates it was Brisbane a even pretty more. forgettable game. Like I, now, that, now that I think about it, I was like, yeah, okay, they kicked the first five. I genuinely forgotten. Yeah, they ran him down. They never it wasn't like, a, losing it again. It was so. an awesome game. Uh, best on ground of the week. <laughs> who was the best player we watched? Calamache. I don't mind this. That, he was clutch. For a dude who only had, what, 11 touches? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he kicked three goals. He He's was been having moments all year. A real Cyril 11, 11 touches where he just has that massive impact. That's yeah. a great call. Yeah. Very Cyril-esque. Yeah. Uh, so Bruce is loving it. the way that he sort of <clears throat> just had these moments late that really, really mattered, it was awesome. Like He kicked two goals in the, th- in the fourth quarter without him, they don't win. Yep. It's as simple as that. He feels such an an important role for them as well, right? Like that sort of weird 
Where do you want to play him? Oh, we'll play half him forward, yeah. Play him half forward. Oh, where, is it? where else is he going to go? Well, he's basically anywhere. He, he, could play, he could even play like a wing because he's got pace. And like, that's the cool thing about Rayner as well. Yeah. Like, they've just got yeah. these multi-dimensional yeah. sort of half <coughs> half forward flankers that you can just play anywhere. Play in the pocket. You can you can play them around. You can even Charlie, play them half back. You can play like, them back if you wanted to. Well, it's just awesome, and they both rule. But Archie was fantastic, and I think yep. what he's been in the Brisbane. System now for like years and years and years. One year on West Coast, wasn't it? Suns. I think yeah, he was on the Suns. Uh, I can't remember to be honest. He, he definitely was at West Coast. I thought it was West Coast. Wasn't yeah, it? maybe I don't know. No, Gold just Gold Coast and Brisbane. Yeah, oh. yeah. Who am I thinking? I, of? So I love. I just love the game that he played because he popped up when it mattered most. Kicked two goals, won them the game basically. He and yep. Rainer. Alex Heaney uh, just controlled the game from the outset. Two goals, twenty-four touches, six marks, six tackles, seven or eight clearances, but just like. It was just one of those ones like, yeah, I am the best player out here. Like, didn't yeah. explode and dominate like you did the GWS game. But there was times where it's just like, you could see me like, hey, he's going to get the ball here and something's going to happen. Well, the mark that he took on like the pocket, he yeah. just, uh, was that the, the Burgoyne? The Burgoyne. Burgoyne. So 30, like, 30, 30 seconds before, you could see him just tracking around mm-hmm. and Burgoyne's following him. And I just said to my dad, I was like, hey, he's going to mark this. Watch this. He just went bang with a little stiff arm. Yeah. Great. He's he was so smart. So easy. It's yeah. like, ooh. What he did it a couple of times on Burgoyne. I too. wasn't happy you guys all picked Heaney for best on ground. But then, then like, yeah, fair enough. He dominated. Some guy like, really pulled you up on that. They're, like, yeah. they're, they're going to pick <laughs> oh, who they really? think. It's like taking the piss. And yeah. the guy's like, he wasn't happy in the comments with Mike. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> they're picking who they think is going to be the best. What do you want to do? Not do yeah, that? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, shut up. I was like, yeah, fair enough. Like, I just wanted to be a bit different. Uh, Stats boy. Also, uh, you were thinking of Brendan Archie. I just remembered he, uh, he played for West Coast. Uh, so the, the brother of there Archie. we go. Yeah, that's, that's the other the other Archie. Yes, but not not the, as good as the lesser Archie. The lesser yeah. Archie. I didn't want to say that, but yeah, you, you said that. Uh, best on ground, human cluggage. Uh, he's just been stepped up. <clears throat> I believe he was huge. Huge McCluggage. Huge McCluggage. Yep. He had a huge performance. Uh, Twenty seven disposals, one goal, six clearances, seven tackles, which I really love. Just those midfielders that can just work end to end, like. A really, if you look at his uh, heat map, which actually I might have to get up and uh, send to Joe to chuck up on the screen. All uh, get the disposal, score worm. All the score worm, whatever we want. The His disposals, I reckon he had a disposal in every part of the ground. That's just how hard he works. Gets that uh, seven tackles. And then just a quick unsung hero shout out. I said it before. Lester and Stasevich. A lot of people wouldn't even think about them as like being the best on ground. Stasevich only had 15 touches, but I think it was unbelievable. Like, him coming onto the ground, cats were like scared of him. Like, he's he's just massive. He's big, bald head. Like, everyone was just scared of him when he came onto the ground. I thought he was awesome. So, I hit on Stasevich, what, a week ago? I think in one of last week's yeah. shows. Like He's like just surprisingly athletic. Yeah, very size To this as well. point where yeah. you're like, that dude is just everywhere. Mm. And if the ball goes near him. I think he wins he like, there. He like completely affects the play in just like so many different ways. Yeah. It's awesome. I need to double check, but I think he wins a lot of their running like uh, trials and things yeah. like that. Even though he's massive and a lot taller than a lot of other people. So, yeah. All right. Who's old mate? No mates. Who's got no mates? Reese Stanley in the, at the end of that game for the Cats, just missing it. I, it's just I would have gone Stengel over him. Everybody he did nothing. Everybody yeah. was like, "Come on, man." He, but to be fair, if he, he just had to kick a goal, like, like it's him. very easy. With the headband and the ruffled hair, he looked like someone had just decked him. <laughs> just it looked like, like he'd been yeah. pieced together from a jigsaw yeah. puzzle. Like he's just grabbing his leg, he's yeah. grabbing his head, his hair's all askew. It was just weird, but at the same time, like every person. <laughs> When he misses that, he's like, oh. And like, you can't and blame him. And people started leaving. Yeah. You couldn't blame him because the dude has just been like hit by a Mack truck. But kick the goal, you give yourselves a chance. He'll be, yeah, he'll be kicking himself that he can. Because that is like the definition of an old mate, no mates, where he's like, you've missed it. And like the, the air goes to the MCG at that point. Everyone's like, oh, so, yeah. Now no chance. And that was it. So yeah. it's a tough one. But obviously, the big one for me is like Connor Rosie and Charlie Dixon. Like, Rosie. Yeah, he didn't step up. Just two goals. The rest of that game, though, was so ineffectual. Like As I said, though, he'd have these two-minute spurts where like, he's everywhere, and then he'd just go MIA completely. Yeah. Uh, the same thing happened to Butters. Like You look at someone like the Hornet. So Jason Hornet had more Francis, impact, yeah. just had a massive <clears throat> impact across that game. Rose E was just this sort of weird, like, in and out Floater. of the game. Mm. Floater is the exact sort of idea, and it was not good. And Charlie Dixon, obviously, oh, mate, no, mates. Like, just hey, just kid. Go- Ever see a uh, retired footballer still playing footy? Oh, bad. Yes, once. Like, jeez. <laughs> it was BAD. Bad. Oh, oh nice. man, no much. Like, he, no one says anything to him on the bus. Like, they all get on the bus. It's like, yeah, I need Charlie. Well, to be fair, he's massive. And yeah, probably he's going to mess put, with he's gonna put you <laughs> put him through in a headlock, window. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, everybody's singing on, yeah, that was that was great. Mm. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, mm. real team player. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> anyway, tough one for Charlie Dixon. Alex. Masava. 
Oh. He's paid three quarters of a million dollars to do what so exactly? So obsessed with money. It's weird. The, <laughs> but, he's, but he's taking up a big chunk of their no, salary. I agree. I agree. They That's threw a fine. bunch of money at him to get him there for five years. He it's not his fault that they paid him, I guess. But He yeah, gets he was three bad. touches in a prelim. And he just doesn't look like he knows what to do. There are he's in the forward he, line and he he's looks like, lost. He's like, oh, there goes a ball. Yeah. yeah. And he's just jumping and hoping. He's getting in the way of Georgiades and Dixon. And Tom McCartan's going, <laughs> sweet. Mm. And then he went back and Joel Marty's like, I'm just going to run over here. And you're like, oh, yeah, cool. He was pathetic. Yeah, he did make Joel Marty's football IQ just like. Look like it was incredible. They, <laughs> like, he, what is going on? If, this yeah, is great. I don't. Good on him. He's he's getting the bag, but <laughs> honestly, horrendous. It is weird that they sort of don't know how to use him properly, and it's like, what is? They didn't really hit him up very well, but of course, only had they bought him in as a defender, <laughs> yeah. and then they've thrown him forward, and yeah. he's doesn't he, work. Yeah. He doesn't know how to read the flight of the footy. No. It should be like this awesome Agreed. combo of Alira Lear, Radigalia, Zerk Thatcher. Like it should be just like this solid, awesome. Like, if they did that at the start of the season, looked okay, exactly. but it didn't really work in the end. Stats boy, uh, Shannon Neal, as old man, no matter. This is very harsh for a young player. He's only played a handful of games, but. It's a bit awkward. Tomahawk's going, hey, mate, did you do anything and you kept me out of the side? Nine disposals. Honestly, that's not that bad, but he dropped marks, didn't kick a goal. He's in the side probably just to even kick one, just to just as another forward option because you had Ollie Henry kick four. You always have Jezza. Stengel was really bad, but just Shannon Neal keeping Tomahawk out of the side. Tomahawk's like, oh, I, I could have kicked probably one. And yeah, I just wasn't happy with his performance in it. A lot of the older guys would be like, oh, it's okay, Shannon Neal, but I feel like Tomahawk deep down is like, I think I could have done a better job in a final. I'm not saying it was the wrong call because during the week I said definitely got to pick Shannon. He was great last week, but it was just a he's bit. He's kicked a impact. goal in every game yeah. he's played this year. He was good, and Apart I, he had to, from this one, he had to definitely play, but he just didn't step up in the end at all. Yeah. I think everyone watching that knew that like, oh, if Geelong win this, you're not playing next week. <laughs> or you reckon? Yeah, he would have got dropped 100. percent I still think I would have picked him, but he shouldn't have been dropping marks like that for a big guy, and he was on a smaller opponent a lot of the time. So, oh man, no man. It is just tough that he's kicked a goal every game yeah. this year and just has a. Bit of a down game. Like, mm. oof, I do, yeah. I still think he's all right, but tough. That's right. Uh, we could almost throw in like old man, no man's tomahawk. Just watching yeah, him actually, in the stands freaking yeah, out the yeah. entire game. That must suck. At least like, he's won a lot of flags because like if he'd never been in like, just say he's retiring next yeah, week he's and he's or, never. If he's like yeah, Richo or yeah, something. He's never he's won like a flag. with like the, yeah. the tail end of his career like and Richmond to good. Yeah, that would be brutal, yeah. It'd be tough. Was that but, Shane Edwards? No, not Shane Edwards. There was someone before who uh, played 280 games Chris Newman, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah. He missed yeah. out all the flags. Yeah. I reckon it's no, that's, it is actually. that up. All right. Why I can't stand after a crazy week of footy. I don't know. It was sick. I, oh, you're I, good. You're happy. I, I'm pretty happy, but what I can't stand is like anyone who cares about where teams are from. What like, do you I mean? think that's weird. What do you mean by so, that? Oh, can't believe there's no Victorian teams. Victorian's oh, going to yeah, hate this grand final. No. Also, we still it's get the MCG. We get the MCG. Sick. It doesn't matter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it's rad. If it was played at the SCG, yeah, yeah, Victorians might be upset. <laughs> As it is, we still have the footy. Yeah. It's still rad. It's going to be awesome. Like, And if you cast your mind back, like, you can't, stats work, because you're four years old. But, Hang on. But, those, as Sydney, you said, right? Sydney we West Coast? Had, when you had Sydney West Coast no, I remember finals, they were amazing. Absolutely okay. sick. I was like, Brisbane hey. Port stuff, sometimes fun, sometimes not. Like Sydney, Adelaide in the mid 90s, they we did, did we they played play Sydney against North. each other? Sydney North, yep. Adelaide North. Who did Adelaide beat in North? St. St. Kilda. St. Kilda, there you go. But like, I don't care where teams are from. No. Just play good no. footy. Two best teams. Doesn't Just matter. play good footy. Yep. Entertain me. I'm Robbie Williams over here. Katy Perry. Katy yeah. Perry. We haven't even talked about Katy Perry. She's going to be awesome. Here you go. Has she got a song about swans? No. They're She's got a song win. about the lions, the roar, yeah. <sighs> I don't know but what the song is. But she says, called. I've got the eye of the tiger. The roar of the lion. Yeah, maybe the she. Lion she uh. Well, is there, a, is there a top spot market for that? That's fine. Can you out. bet on her She's changing, the, right. changing to, to lion instead of tiger? All oh. right. Uh, what can't you stand, Alex and Ollie? I got nothing this week. I'm good. Because Sydney won? That, yeah. That honestly, that is fair enough. That's fair. Your team's in the grand final. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah you, know, you, you cannot complain about anything. Let's get noise. No, I'm, I'm saying it's good. This is the <laughs> happiest he's been in. I think it's more just going to be good. all week the Logan McDonald car. Oh, they're going to pick him up. It's going to be annoying to talk about. Yeah. But we will still talk about it. Of course we will. Mine, why I can't stand is the bump being being phased out of the game. Of course, I don't want people bumping people in the head. Stats or, guy, pro concussion. No, or bumping away from the ball. I'm not for that. I hate when, or like when players go over the line, it happens so much in local footy. I hate that where or someone's about to kick and they just bump them. If someone is touching the ball, which uh, Kyle Oman was, Tom Stewart literally goes for the bump, gets called for holding somehow. That is the worst call of the whole season. I just can't stand that the umpire goes, 
oh, that looked bad, so I'm just going to pay for a kick. So that do is we, not do, how you're do supposed we, to Do we player. say the same about when Lizard uh, on Burgoyne? Because a, no, oh. a, a slight breeze could knock over But Chase that was Burgoyne. more of a tunnelling, which is against... No, 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 no was it wasn't. Was, he was standing there. One? He just sort of ran through, oh, just, just gave him a nudge no, on sorry, the way I'm through. I'm thinking of a different one, And yeah. Burgoyne just went, ah! No, I'm thinking of a different one. That's right, that's right. But... Oh, just the bump, like it's I, a physical. I, I, oh. This I'm gonna. I, this is where I start sounding like Wayne Carey. <laughs> I'm never watching footy again. <laughs> really? Are you Wayne? Uh, to be fair, the footy overall is the best it's been exactly. in a long time. But that was Foot, just annoying. This was wildly frustrating. It's still a physical contest. He's touching the ball. You can get mm. the guy. It's a hip and shoulder. Like yeah. you're bumping the dude because he's getting. So the if footy. he went in, like as in to tackle him and shirt fronted him right in the gut. Also, I don't mind if that was holding because he wasn't. In possession but of the he ball, wasn't but he didn't holding tack, him. He didn't hold him. He just it. bumped him. He wasn't holding yeah. him. He's trying to get the ball. You're trying to stop him from getting the ball. It's a bump. It. It's yeah. quite literally. No one got hurt. Ball. I'm Moment not going to be fun. mad if that means Nathan Williamson can't umpire the grand final. Sure. There you go. Uh, outside of that as well, I think the the sort of the bumping physicality stuff. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> All right, move on. No, oh, I'm trying to figure out. Talk about this. It's just. People who sort of start freaking out about like, oh, we should have a, you know, a week off before the grand final. Or nah, nah, uh, just keep nah, going. Get into because everyone's fine. loving footy at the moment. It's like also this moment of like, yeah, just don't do it. Like the danger tackle. We'd be talking about this nonstop. Yeah. If, if they were in one. Thank God. That it's like, is not, danger yeah. in trouble? Yeah, danger's in danger. But would they rub him out for a week? I think they would. Oh, he's the, he's the uh, AFL. What does he do? Poster child. Yeah. Something like that. Too. I was going to say the player player I mean, the uh, He is also yeah. the poster child. He'd, uh, he'd give another, what, two hour soliloquy and bore them all to death. Yeah. Right. With all this in mind, there is a game coming up on Saturday. Really? It is a, the Swans. The 2024 Swans. AFL Grand Final. What are the odds? Of course. <laughs> These are brought to you by Top Sport, the home of 40 finals. Our good friends over at Top Sport. You could have uh, gotten around the AFL Today show, same game multis on the weekend as well. The port one came very close. Jeez, that was annoying. Thanks, Zach Butters. But they, they've changed since uh, we wrote these down. So the odds, they're moving. <clears throat> they are. Swans are $1.72 favourites against the Brisbane <clears throat> Lions. Cool. And how are we looking at in terms of a- Yeah, Brisbane at $2.12. The line is three and a half. That's very close. Swans $1.95, Brisbane at $1.85. Whereabouts is that? Top spot. Elsewhere. Wait. What are you looking at? Really just looking no, at he's the No, he's looking at the, um, the line. I, oh, thought, the I thought you meant yeah. head-to-head, sorry. $1.95, yeah. $1.85 of the line. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. Yep. It's, it, it's fitting, right? I think it's about Slight right favorites. in a grand final. But Swans could be – I'd probably even put them up a little bit more in like terms it, of favorite. Mate of mine said last short. night maybe $1.65, dollars 215 I think the line should be closer to like five or two, maybe even ten, rather than three and a half. No, it's a bit four short. and a half, five and a half. Is Lions have right. a yeah. five and one record against the Swans in their last six, obviously Ooh. decided by two points earlier this year at the Gabba. Okay. But it's a grand final and both teams look really good. So, and a new, yeah. neutral territory that apparently they both suck at. Yeah, <laughs> true. Well, Brisbane well not now, anymore. Brisbane yeah. are back. The Brisbane Swan- are now 3-16 and, and they've finally beaten another team that isn't yeah. Melbourne. And the Swans are 2-1 there it's this year. It's actually crazy how many wins Brisbane have to get to just get it back to like even 3-16. Yeah. 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 They're, they're, they're just going to play Richmond there for the next 10 years. <laughs> yeah. So first initial lean, well, Wednesday show, midweek, uh, the Midweek Madness show that we will have this week and then the Thursday team show, which will be our grand final preview. Yep. We also have the Monday show, which will be the Brown. That's just Brown though, though. We will be sort of hitting on this. What's the first initial blush, Swans, obviously? Yep. How do you feel in terms of margin? Um, so I was saying this last night. I'd much rather play Geelong than Brisbane. Oh, yeah, good. yeah, agreed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, what's that? <laughs> oh, no! Oh, yeah, no, fool. I actually really? pulled that out on someone. Imagine the other that night. if you the first thing makes the grand final, just gets to choose. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> you know, first thoughts given Brisbane's tough road through the finals, the last two weeks especially, I think Swans, two to three goals, but sort of not, not you know, when you can stress when it's two or three goals, but it's one 100%. of those ones that's sort of four or five goals clear. Maybe Brisbane kick one or two late. But mm. yeah, I think Swans get it done. Ooh, nice. I'm right now, I'm going to change about 10 times this week, but I'm leaning towards Brisbane. Like I said, I think uh, the Swans forwards lifting was part of the reason the Swans smashed Port. You come up against uh, Brisbane, who have the best back line, I think, out of uh, out of the two. I know that that's what, that's what I'm saying. The most inform, inform. That's what I'm going to say. I know that you would argue with that, and then a lot of Sydney it. people okay. would say that. I just think 
there's a lot more versatility. Anyway, that's all I'm saying. And I think they can shut down all of the Swans forwards except for maybe Papley because Papley will kick a couple of goals. But you, the likes of Amadi, uh, McDonald and McLean aren't going to go that well. I'm gonna, this is not going <laughs> to come back to bite me at all against Harris Andrews, Payne and Starsevich. I think they can dominate. So that's why I'm leaning towards Brisbane. Best team in 150 years. Let's go. <laughs> Swans. They're going to romp it in. Okay. 80. Hey, what? Yeah, smashing. Absolutely nice. smashing. We be... want a bloody good game. No, so we this don't. We've, we've seen you don't buy it. Aussie Rules 40 ever, Stats Boy. Well, Since like Melbourne Uni true. in like 1856. <laughs> Melbourne Uni. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> Swans are easy. Laughing. Brisbane battle tested. Uh, but the Swans are the best team we've seen in 150 years. Like no holes on any line. <laughs> I There's can't no wait way they to see the graphic on Thursday Absolutely night. Absolutely no Brisbane way. Under they, your name. No way they could possibly lose this. The Swans should be like dollar $1.05. Honestly, I'm glad I'm sitting in between. Alex could just choke you but out. He's yeah. been doing it all year. And just <laughs> Where did half of Jim's beard go? I'm just saying, yeah, this, is, holding this, it is up. this is great. <laughs> just just going, Tell me you're red, man. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm to it. I've spoken it into existence. That's, That's what I mean. We've ever he seen. cursed Essendon because as a Carlton fan, that was hilarious. It's his plan. But where is this? The, sw- the Swans have been the best team The Swans team are living year. up to my amazing expectations. What are you talking about? If they lose, they right, right. Can we hurry up and wrap this up? Top five for the Norm Smith. Isaac Heaney, $5. He man. Da, ba, ba, da, 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 da. Lockie Neal, $6.50. So obviously if you feel like either side of the draw, whoever you think going to win, gonna win. Yeah. there's your top two. Right there, Chad Chumley Warner, seven dollars fifty. Whoa, where roll? He is nine dollars to win the Nob Smith. Uh, and Zorko at fourteen, which is a bit of a that's a, that's a good odds, interesting one. Fourteen stuff. bucks, yeah, thirty six touches. Who knows? But I don't know. I think outside of that stats, boy, we'll break this all down. Obviously on Wednesday yes. and Thursday show. <clears throat> uh, you mentioned Joey Duckett's. Yeah, uh, it's if he plays our forward load of the game, twenty six bucks. That's crazy value. Maybe like a sneaky, sneaky one because if Kyle Lerman kicked straight, I reckon he would have got best on. He was, he's fifty one dollars. Luke Parker, Alex said he steps up in the uh, big games, but probably not. He's been playing. He played the negating role, yeah. like so. It could be he's doing a team role to shut. Like it wouldn't shock me if he does the Billy Frampton on Travis Andrews or uh, Harris guess. Andrews, not Travis. But at the moment, it, out of those like sort of favorites, Errol at nine bucks, I think is really good value because you got. Errol, was, he was awesome on the weekend. I'm back to Heaney early at thirteen dollars, so I'm sitting yeah. pretty right now. I can yeah. work a book around this. But yeah, Heaney five bucks. I know that seems short, but. Still well, pretty given, good odds. because he's Given he's been the best been player so in the good. two games of the finals and probably the last four games he's played, he's been best on in all four. Yeah. But I'm leaning towards Errol at the moment. It is the narrative pick. Yeah. And as I said at the start of the final series, it's like he needs to prove it. Top three. And this is the way you do it. Yep. Go win a Norm Smith son. Right. There you go. The grand final is set. That is it for the what AFL Today show for today. The thing is, we'll be back, amazingly enough, tomorrow. Monday. Oh, yeah. Because it's Brownlow time. Yes. Check it out. So we're going to have an entire Brownlow special for your Monday consumption, which will be very, very fun. We're going to break down all the different markets that Top Sport have up right now. Uh, it is unreal. It's going to be so much fun. I love a Brownlow count. Uh, old mate hates it. She's like, what are you? I'm like, three votes, me, shush. <laughs> <laughs> and away we go. Three tins, Jay Clements. <laughs> and it's going to be sick. I love the Brownlow. I'm fascinated because you know who's reading out the votes this year? Dylan Dude. Gillen. Andrew Gillen, Dylan. Oh, yeah, of course. Can he say GWS? Because uh, I want to Gil find McLaughlin out could if never there is a market about whether or not he's going to get a haircut. Mm. Let's find out. I have a barber. I can get him sorted. We've got so many fun markets to add to Top Sport. Anyway, to we're going to break that all down the Monday show. We we'll need like a timer so we don't go for three hours because I know Crips is the favorite. On the Brownlow one? Yeah. Yeah, that's no problem. <laughs> I'm not actually – look, we'll get to it in the Brownlow show, like, but – it is genuinely up in the air. Like, yeah. yeah. I think There's a lot of the predictors. Three or four guys I reckon they can win. What I found weird, and we'll talk about this in the Brownlow show, but the predictors have actually got, they've gotten closer. And yeah. I'm like, there's been yeah. no games. This yeah. is stupid. What are we doing? All right, all right, let's, let, let's, let's, let's leave that for the Brownlow anyway, show. Anyway, the Brownlow show on Monday. We'll have a midweek manager show on Wednesday, and we'll have the Thursday team's grand final preview show on Thursday night, which will also be live, which will be sick. We're going to have to find a way to get McCurdy and, and or Callum in here provided they get to Melbourne in time. Yep, sure. I like that. Either way, it's going to be awesome. Can't wait for this week. It is the best week in footy, basically. Yep, uh, okay. You have the grand for everything. Grand Talk about parade. crescendos. It's just working your way towards Saturday. It's going to be sick. All right, thank you to Alex. Thank you. Actually rocking up on a Sunday. Head to toe in Swans gear. As I said, he's Brody Grundy's as well, just red and white. All week I'm going to be wearing some sort of Swans badge. I don't mind Please that. change. <laughs> no, just, I like the stench. It. It's just woof. <laughs> Stats boy. Thank you. Good to be back. No, thank you for two stats. All right. Uh, <laughs> remember to smash a like across all the socials for the AFL Today Show. What is it? Aussie Rules Today on the old Facey as well. Subscribe, star, and like us across all of those social channels. YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, and X. And get around all the other shows that we do as well. The AFL Today Show, AFLW Today Show. Yep. Bo, big 
Wednesday big, this week. Big week as well. Wednesday tomorrow. this week. Monday, Monday, Wednesday. Just, it's just mad footy for the next four weeks in Love AFLW. Uh, we have the Greek Today podcast, Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, which will be back very soon. NFL Australia, which is going great guns and hold all tickets for your GGs. Mm-hmm. And uh, make sure you get around all of them, like the Swans are obviously getting around the Premiership Cup later on Saturday this coming week. There's no way they could possibly lose. All right, that's it. We'll catch you plenty of times this week, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday for more AFL Today. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, the Swans are going to win. Footy's back. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.